says Luke chapter 24 and begin at verse 13. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. They talked together of all these things which had happened. <coughs> and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one with another, as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answering, saith unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Beside all this, today is the third day since these, these things were done. Our Father, we thank you today for the people that are here this morning. Take the word now as we have shared it. And through me, your servant this morning, as I present myself to you, Lord, say that that would be pleasing to you today. And we'll glorify you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes today. The Lord being my helper, I'll be brief as I can. On the scripture concerning the road to Emmaus, I guess if I were to have a thought, uh, it would be the road to Emmaus. And I want to take a look at some of the verses of Scripture that I've read you, beginning with verse 21, because we see in this Scripture that uh, two dazed and discouraged disciples were leaving Jerusalem, walking to a place called Emmaus. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ had three days before been crucified, hung on the cross of Calvary, had died there, was buried, and was placed in a grave. On the morning, on the very morning that these two men were walking to Emmaus, Mary and others had went to the tomb and come back with a testimony that the Lord Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. But that did not seem to deter these two men. They were headed out of Jerusalem, the Bible said, and going to a place called Emmaus. They had thought, hoped, maybe even believed that Jesus was the Messiah. He was the one who was going to rescue Israel. They had placed faith in him for that reason, but he'd been crucified. I mean, he was, buried, he was dead. He was buried. And even one of them said that it was the third day. That indicating, at least in his heart and in his mind, that having had three days passed, there was now no hope that he was dead, he was gone. So we see them disappointed, we see them with heavy hearts, we see their, their countenance fallen, and, and they are discussing and talking. Maybe about what could have been, what should have been, what ought to have been, but what obviously is not going to be. And they're headed out down the road. <coughs> but in verse 15, Jesus himself, the Bible said, drew near unto them. This is the same Jesus that they had 
been following, the same Jesus that they had saw hung on the cross, this the same Jesus that they had saw planted in a tomb, this same Jesus, the Bible said in verse 15, drew near to them and began to talk to them. I want you to know this morning that the road to Emmaus is a very lonely place to be for a child of God. Amen? I mean, they were going with their heart downtrodden. They were discouraged and, and, and they were hurt and, and they were leaving town. And I know a lot of people that have walked the Christian life that are just like that. I mean, at one time they were on fire for God. Everything was going good. But then something happened in their life that broke their heart, that discouraged them, that deterred them from the faith that they once had, and they find themselves just like this pair of men on the road to Emmaus discussing what could have been, what might have been, what should have been, but what is it? How many times have you found yourself losing heart while waiting for a promise that you received from God, something that God promised you and, and you hoped for it and you waited for it and you dreamed about it and you talked about it and you confessed it. But while you were waiting for that thing to come to pass, you lost heart and got discouraged. Maybe you, this morning, as you said in this church, find yourself on the road to Emmaus. And it didn't work out like you planned. And, it, and, and life didn't turn out the way you had hoped. And you're sitting here even this morning wondering in your heart and in your mind, what now? What do I do now? Where do I go now? What do you do when you've been waiting and praying and believing and everything around you is falling apart? Is there an answer for that? Isaiah chapter 26 verse 1 The Bible said thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. The key part of that verse is that because your trust in the Lord. You see, a lot of people have a problem trusting the Lord when things don't work out exactly the way they have pictured in their mind that they're going to work out. But there's something that I want you to pay close attention to, very particular attention to this morning in the scripture that I read to you. And if you're not careful, you will overlook this obvious fact but you need to know that Jesus put this in Scripture for a very specific reason. The Bible said they were leaving Jerusalem. Well, you say, Preacher, why is that so important? Maybe they just lived in a maze. Maybe so. But... There's a very important reason that that little sentence is in Scripture. And I'm going to show you what it means this morning. You see, these two men no longer possess their peace. When they walked with the Lord, when they witnessed His miracles, when they saw what He did, they were at peace with Him. They had confidence in Him. They had faith in Him. They believed that He was the Messiah. But a lot of things had happened since then, and now they no longer are in possession of their peace. The word Jerusalem actually comes from two Hebrew words. It takes two words to make up Jerusalem. And those two words combined together actually mean peace or to be at peace. To be complete, to be finished, to be sound, to be safe, to be tranquil, to be healthy and prosperous. Actually, the word of Jerusalem, the word Jerusalem in the Hebrew means teaching of peace. Now do you see why it was so important that the Lord 
put that statement in there that they were leaving Jerusalem. They were actually leaving their peace. They were walking away from their peace. How many of us, in times of discouragement, in times of heartbreak, have walked away from the very thing that would have brought us peace? The Lord Jesus Christ. Have you noticed? I've noticed over the years that many people can serve the Lord, come to church and do what God wants them to do as long as everything's going right. But when the, the bottom starts to fall out, the first thing they come up with is quit church. Leave Jerusalem. Walk away from your peace. That's what these two men were doing. That's why they were on the road to Emmaus and they were discussing, if you will, all the situation and what had happened. You see, Jerusalem is known by many names. It's known as Salem, the city of David, the city of God. But the true meaning of the word Jerusalem is the teaching of peace. And these two men were leaving the very thing that would have brought them peace, the teaching of peace. This place, Jerusalem, is where they met the Lord. This place, Jerusalem, is where they experienced their relationship with God. This place, Jerusalem, was where the Lord was introduced to them, and they became His friends and, and fell in love with Him and began to follow Him. But now, they're walking away. You see, the Lord had told them in advance that trouble was coming. The Lord had warned them in advance that there was going to be something terrible happen. He had told them of the crucifixion. He had warned them. As a matter of fact, in the book of John, he said, It's expedient for you, it's absolutely necessary for you that I go away, because if I don't go away, the Comforter won't come. They had heard all this, yet. Yeah. Within three days of the crucifixion, they were walking away from everything that they had learned, everything that meant anything to them, everything. They were departing from all of it. You see, these two men were actually leaving the teaching of peace, the foundation of their faith, and the habitation of their hope. They were actually walking it was centered in Jerusalem. That's where it all began. That's where it all happened. But yet now, they were walking away from that. How many times do you and I find ourselves on the road to Emmaus because of something that happened when our faith was good, when everything was going good, but something happened to discourage ourselves. We find ourselves wandering on the road of hopelessness and worry. You see, that's what the road to Emmaus was, the road of hopelessness and worry. These two men were hopeless. They were worried. They were concerned. And that's why they were talking among themselves and, and, and recounting everything that had happened and, and everything that had led up to this point in their life. And all too often, even though we know the promise